Hi there, today I will show you how to create three slide systems in Goudini with VEX from scratch, with the fully controllable parameters, randomized looks, animation, growing and colorizing. I will use a lot of VEX coding and some particle systems, and I will explain every step. At the end of the video I will show how you can render this in a Redshift. First I explain a little bit about the concept. So we will start only from the one point and this point will move up and divide itself onto the two points and uh, so on, so on, so on, so on. So the typical L system, but we will create it manually with particle system. So let's start. So first I explain the algorithm that lays behind the system. So we have an initial point that travels up and at some point here it reaches the frame 10. At frame 10 we divide this point onto two points. How we can do this? There is a velocity of this point and around this velocity we can build a virtual cone which has its maximum angle and inside of this cone we can define any direction and for example the first point the first the initial point will change their direction to this one and the second newly created point will change the direction inside of this cone to this one Then these points travel some more frames and for example this point will travel another 10 frames and this point will travel only 5 frames. So this will be frame 20 for this point. And this will be frame 15 for this point. And then I build another virtual cone here. And uh, create new point which takes one of the random direction inside of this cone. And this, the second point will... Oh, yeah, I mean the initial point will go, for example, here inside of this cone and the same situation is here, this, there is a velocity vector, virtual cone and we build two new directions inside of this cone. So let's start with Goudini. Let's be sure that the FPS is 30 and the start frame is 0. Let's create a geometry node, let's name it 3 and let's add a first point in the very center of coordinate. Let's create a velocity attribute on it. The size is 3 because it's a vector and the, it points up. The y-axis is 1. So and then append the pop network where the movement will have a place. Inside of a pop network we want to choose uh, the emission type L points. So it works, but we need only one point, therefore input activation will be one only when the RF start is equal frame. So now it's one only in frame zero. Mm, now let's
let's add a pop wrangle node. This is our main node. All the magic will be inside this node. Let's name it Bears New Points. Inside of this node, we can define some global parameters. Let's start with the max angle. The max angle is the maximum angle of this um, cone. Max angle this is a float number. Then let's define the this part this values twenty and fifteen. Um, so this is a minimum and maximum length of branches in frames. Integer minimum length is integer channel minimum length and integer maximum length is integer channel maximum length. And uh, then, because we, we will need a random number somewhere, we can define it manually sometimes. So let's play the seed here. So now I'm going to explain how I'm going to create a division every 10 frames for beginning. Uh, so what what I can do this here I can do if frame reminder division frame is zero uh, what I just did so what's division frame let's start with this division frame is 10 it's our first first uh, division frame which is 10 and we didn't define it right now let's create it here on the upper level division frame is 10 so what's the remainder remainder is the remainder of the division it's very simple so when the frame is 10 and the division frame is also 10 the remainder is 0 and when the frame is 20 and the division frame is 10 the remainder is also 0 because 20 uh, divides is divided by 10 with a 0 remainder so that's all so when the remainder of division frame by division frame is 0 and when at the same time the frame is um, is is uh, more than RF start, which is zero. Uh, we need this one because we don't need is the point the first point to be divided in the frame in frame zero. So let's create our new point. New point. This is an integer in integer variable because this is a number of the point and point so this variable will keep a number of a newly created point at point in a very same position where the original point was so what we just did we just created a new point in frame 10 20 30 40 and so on Let's check it. Yes, it creates new point and it creates too many points as you can see with the crazy values because it doubles every frame. Why? Why? Because every next frame, let, let me show you here on the upper level. On the upper level, we can see that initially everything is good division frame is 10 and there is only one point but then in frame 10 we have the second point created but the division frame now on the second point is only zero because we we didn't 
set the, the division frame for this point so it's zero by default and therefore it will create new points from this point every zero frame so every frame it will be created to prevent this we need to set point attribute of the newly created point and this attribute will be the same division frame of the newly created point which is new p which is uh, what uh, the new p is the number of the newly created point and we let's um, so let's override it with a 10 value for now okay let's let's check if it works so yes it works now as you can see they duplicates every 10 frames it's okay okay what we do now uh, we need to change the direction of both points the original and the newly created point we need to change their direction in the moment of division in the moment of the division so we need to define this virtual cone so let me let me draw it here again so we need to build this virtual cone and this central vector is velocity vector how we can do this in Goudini there is a useful func function sample direction cone that does this for us let's use it for this one we will need a center vector which is velocity a maximum angle that we already set it up and uh, the mystical u value which is simple uh, two dimension vector of the random some random numbers so it doesn't matter really what the numbers is uh, are but i will show you how we are going to create them so let's start from center max angle and let's do this so this is a vector new direction new dir is sample direction cone so the first one is vector center velocity the second one is maximum angle we already have one maximum angle and uh, i want to type the maximum angle in degrees but then for this function we have to convert it in radians and the last value is a random two-dimensional vector rent u which isn't defined right now therefore we need to define it vector 2 rent u is for example just two numbers 0 and 1 why not and uh, now uh, so I will not forget about it we will randomize these numbers later and uh, now let's define the new direction new velocity with multiplying this new direction vector by the old velocity magnitude and now let's apply this newly created attribute to this so, uh, so we need velocity so we will create a velocity attribute on the newly created point 
and this velocity attribute will be equal new velocity. Okay, let's see if it works. Um, so it doesn't right now because what? Well, uh, let's see. I think this is because we didn't define the maximum angle value. We didn't promote our values here. Yes, that's that's right. Maximum angle is zero. Let's define it as twenty-five. And the minimum and maximum length will be five and fifty. Let's see if it works. It doesn't work again. But I think this may be because we didn't set these values to random numbers. Maybe. Yes, yes, now it works. So you see it works. In frame 10 we have the division. And uh, while the, fr the point zero travels up as it was before, the newly created point one travels in the other direction. Uh, let's random these two values because we don't want it to be the same every, every division. It looks terrible. Let's use a random function by a frame and pt num and some random number and the same one for the second number frame plus pt num plus seed plus some random number <coughs> when it's about randomizing you should never for you should never forget to add some random number and to use the maximum arguments you can. So now it should be completely random. Yes, it's random. And uh, what we did just did, we did the newly, we changed the direction of the newly created point, but we didn't change the <laughs> direction of the initial point. Uh, let's get it in order, so let's uh, type here change the direction of the newly created point and now let's change in the direction of the original point. Here we can just copy this one and change the random numbers. Numbers, something like this. And uh, it makes an error because we already have this variable defined. Let's just override them. And actually we don't need this new v variable to be defined here because you can do this directly, you can write this value directly to the velocity of the original point. So let's see. Now you can see that every point and the original point and the newly created point uh, change their direction. Okay. Now let's use our minimum lens and maximum lens values and uh, change the lens of uh, branches. Oh, so, for example, I don't know, maybe here, let's define. new division frame let's randomize it by pt num plus seed 
plus some random number and because the random the random function returns a value between 0 and 1 let's fit it between min len and max len and because because it's an integer attribute let's floor it down to the to the solid arguments i i don't know how it's in english i mean that this will be integer attribute integer variable not float i think we should make this one somewhere here so here we define this new division frame attribute and here we applying attributes to a newly created created point so we already applied a velocity attribute let's copy it let's apply division frame attribute here new division frame so now we have created a new division frame attribute for each new point that that have been created has been created it's already visible but it's time to make it more visible let's go to the upper level i will show you so i'm going to mesh it a little let's start with the trail and the trail length is 400 this is our beautiful tree uh, let's create a connection line between all the points with an add sop polygons by group by attribute id so it doesn't work because if we check the if we check the ids you can see that there are no id here they are all minus one and we can create them manually just every iteration we can create an id which is equal pt num pt number point number now let's see if it works it works you can see our beautiful growing animation and you can see that some iterations are shorter than another it's very beautiful it's what we need and i also can show you that because it's a particle system you can also use a pop force for example pop force noise here to change the look of the tree completely sometimes it's very useful So you can make it more organic. You can make not only trees, but uh, roots or some organic systems. I don't know. So let's didn't uh, let's don't do this too crazy. Just a little bit. Maybe. ok 
Okay, maybe some, something like this. Or we can also play with a seed number here. It will change the overlook also. We can play with the minimum maximum length. Okay, let's let's stop with this look. Now when we have a beautiful tree, I'm going to show you how we can to mesh it and colorize it. Now with the edge attribute. So you know what the edge attribute is. Uh, edge attribute is the edge of the each particle that we have. We can use this edge attribute for colorizing. Let's do this with a wrangle. Let's call it. Let's name it set color. Color is fit age between zero and I don't know uh, we, we need to calculate the maximum age number for each frame but for now we didn't do this so let's just use a 5 and let's use this newly created color attribute for colorizing Something like this. And now I would like to show you how we can change this age attribute here. So if we override this edge of the new liquid, so how the edge works, I need to show you before the showing. Every time when the, the new point is created, the edge of this point will be zero again. So and then every frame it increases, 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 increases and when the new point is created it's again zero and so on so forever so that's why every every start of the, the start of every branch is black because we have this uh, color of the start is black and it's okay it looks beautiful but we also can change it's it is, it is a look of the tree with another using of the edge attribute we can we, we can set the overall edge for the all uh, for the overall tree from the very start of the trunk to the very end of the every branch we can use a uniform edge attribute here mm, for this we only need to for newly created point, for every newly, for each newly created point, we can set the edge attribute mm, equal equal the existing edge, not zero, and then then uh, it will be uniform through the entire tree. And uh, here is the time to calculate a maximum range of the attribute. So, because I don't want uh, this white, very white trees here, uh, branches here, so let's create this calculation. Let's name it get attribute maximum 
it's very easy actual <coughs> set detail attribute h maximum h maximum so this function will search for the h attribute and search for the maximum of the values and send it to the detail attribute which is only one the single age max attribute will be here every frame every frame is different so we don't need anymore to calculate it manually and uh, just the second step is to promotion these two points h max is detail zero h max zero so we just get a detail attribute h max and promoted it to the h max attribute of on the points so let's see if it works uh, there is a new h max attribute here which is the same for every point and it changes every frame so it's okay let's just let's just use it here instead instead of five h max h max h max h max so yes it works so you can see that every frame the very end of the branches are the ends of the branches are white forever and it grows constantly it's useful and let's add another edge attribute just name it edge new and set it with a zero set it with zero so it will uh, it will replace the it will create an age new attribute on the new points because this is new points and uh, place uh, and place it and set it as zero and let's just at the very end of this code let's say that the age new um, so we want to modify this edge new attribute the same way as the original edge attribute modify modifies itself every frame. So it should time inc. It should be added with a time inc. And now we can check this edge new attribute. Yes, it works. It works. Uh, the same way we can do a meshing here let's just create a width attribute let's just fit the same age with the from zero to age max this is original range and the desired range is one and zero so and we have to multiply it with the actual width that we need so by default it's zero and now we will use polywire so set width now we will use polywire and use this attribute in the wire radius it works and now it will grow with our tree and each branch will be very thin at the, at the end
Okay, now I'm going to show you how we can render this beautiful tree with the redshift. Let's start with the null. Name it render and set a flag render here. So this will render only this branch uh, which comes to use this render node. In, re in, re in render node context we need a redshift node. We also need redshift light dome. I already have a beautiful HDR map here. Let's disable it in viewport and in background. We will also need a new camera here and a material redshift material builder tree. Let's assign this material to this node tree. And now we can make a test render. Let's decrease the saturation. And now in material we can decrease the brightness a little. Because what do I want? I want some branches to be self-illuminated. We can do this by using the color. The the, the, the color attribute we already have. Please note that we could use a natural Goudini attribute CD and let's use it for example for the emission color here so it will be self-illuminated. Let's just update the geometry and now we have the same look but in this case, if we would use this uh, attribute that that is coming from the tree geometry every time as we need to change it, for example, we need to, to change it from red to green. Every time it's very slow, so we will need to change to reload the geometry into the redshift engine and uh, every time it's just very slow. That's why I wouldn't I wouldn't use this method here. Instead, I would just use a user color attribute and ramp it directly into the shader with the ramp method. In this case, in this case, I only can do this once. I mean updating geometry and then make as many changes as I wish in real time. So let's just make something beautiful. Maybe something like this. Let's now go to the frame 150. In this frame, the tree is bigger. We want to update our render. Okay, so now you can see uh, how we used our color attribute, and we now use the advantage of uh, that we created this tree with a particle system because we have this beautiful edge attribute that we can use for colorizing. And maybe the last the last uh, step is to to add a DOF depth of field here. Just let's make it more visible. So and now we have something interesting on the render. 
So I hope this tutorial was useful. If you like this tutorial, you can subscribe, share, like, and so on. And if you need the source files, you can find them on my Gumroad. The link is in the description. You can also check my website and my NFT collection. Good luck with your renders. See you later.